Professor Fukuhara, Professor Ganten, Director General Chan, dear Margaret, Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to welcome you here today on behalf of the German federal government and again especially on behalf of my colleague Frank-Walter Steinmeier who has, gener has generally allowed us, uh, generously allowed us to hold this event again here in that wonderful place. Let us recall just one year ago here in the room at the opening of the World Health Summit the number of Ebola infection was rising every day. We were in the middle of a major global health crisis. The Ebola crisis came as a shock for all of us. It was very dramatic, in a very dramatic way, Ebola showed us once more in our globalized world what begins as a local restricted health problem can very quickly turn into a regional and even global health threat. The Ebola epidemic had an adverse effect on any aspect of a whole region's public life. Families and entire communities were destroyed. Trade came to a standstill and social life collapsed. More than 28,000 people were infected with the virus and more than 11,000 died. For many years to come, we, and of course especially the Western African region, will have, a deal, have to deal with the long-term impact of the public health crisis. Today, the world community is still insufficiently prepared to cope with public health crises of this magnitude. In the past, we failed to build up sufficient capacities needed for fast and fully coordinated crisis response. The Ebola crisis is a warning for all of us. It is clear the world must be prepared better to deal with future public health crises, and frankly speaking, this is our job today. Yes, it's uncertain when the next public health crisis will strike and what its concrete dimension will be. However, one thing absolute, is absolutely certain already today. The next global health crisis is sure to come and its impact might well be global. Might well be global. And this is why today we are setting the course for the world to be better prepared to, in future to cope with global health crises. But we will only succeed if we act together and assume responsibility jointly. Germany is committed to assuming its international responsibility in health. Our commitment in this area guided, is guided by three principles. First, we are convinced that only by acting globally we will be able to ensure comprehensive health protection locally. Second, we wish to fulfill our global responsibility and make our contribution towards securing the right of health for populations worldwide. And third, the United Nations in general and the World Health Organization in particular have a key role to play in coping with global health challenges Therefore, we advocate strengthening the international health institutions, in particular the WHO. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, think ahead, act together, is the motto of the current German G7 presidency. We see our presidency as both an opportunity and a resp responsibility to take an active part in shaping global health policy together with our partners. Global health was a central priority of the G7 summit on the heads of state and government in Elmau. Given the tremendous challenges before us, three health topics were placed on the G7 agenda. Antibiotic resistance, Ebola, and neglected tropical diseases. What these three topics have in common is the need for a systematic approach. None of these three global health challenges can be overcome with measures from the classical public health toolbox alone. Cross-sectoral measures are necessary, and alongside health, these will have to include other sectors, such as research, development policy, nutrition, and agriculture. However, what these three challenges also have in common is that they can only be overcome in the, if the recommended measures lead to a comprehensive strengthening of health systems. 
The G7 leaders adopted decisions on all three topics in Elmau, thereby laying the foundation for further G7 activities. In order to advance the fight against antibiotic resistance and Ebola and thereby implement the Elmai decisions, I invited my G7 counterparts to attend to a meeting of G7 health ministers which took place three days ago here in Berlin. The meeting of the G7 research ministers which was being held at the same time discussed how the fight against neglected tropical diseases could be furthered internationally. On the first day of the G7 health ministers' meeting, I discussed with my G7 colleagues, Margaret Chan and others, how we can jointly move forward in the fight against AMR. We cannot longer, uh, longer ignore the fact that an increasing number of bacterial pathogens are becoming resistant to antibiotics. Over the past few years, there has been a massive increase in antibiotic resistance. It affects all of us, both the industrialized and the developing countries. Conservative estimates suggest that well over 700,000 people already die every year from infection caused by resistant bacteria, and the numbers are increasing. Alongside the personal suffering, we are also faced with the far-reaching economic consequences. The OECD estimates the losses suffered by all OECD countries as a result of antimicrobial resistance at almost 3 billion, in German we would say it's 3 trillion US dollars by the year 2050 if we do not begin to adopt countermeasures today. The figures make very clear that we have only one choice, to act jointly and we have to take action now. No country is capable to, of winning the fight against antibiotic resistance alone. It is only through joint act, uh, to joint, globally coordinated action that we can achieve real progress in fighting AMR and developing new innovative antibiotics, diagnostic and alternative treatments methods. However, we will only make progress if we get human and veterinary medicine, agriculture, and research to work together globally in the spirit of a one health approach. This, to this end, we have collected good practices for the one health approach together with our G7 partners and have made them available in the form of a brochure. May I show it just to you, our new work? With these efforts, we, the G7 states, want to support the drawing up of national action plans for combating antimicrobial resistance worldwide and in doing so, contributing to the containment of resistance. I've had discussions with my G7 colleagues about how we can create better incentives for the development of new antibiotics and treatment methods in the future. However, at the same time, we have also discussed restrictions in the trade in antibiotics in particular by making them, by making all antibiotics subject to prescription. This is the route that I personally advocate. I'm convinced that this is a way to ensure that what we consider to be, to be a priceless commodity for the world at large, antibiotics without resistance, will remain accessible to everyone in the long term. The second central topic of the G7 Health Ministers Conference were the lessons to be learned from Ebola. Ladies and gentlemen, we must take home the right lessons from this crisis and we must do, we all must do our homework. Together we must ensure that the international community will be better prepared for similar emergencies in the future. Ebola will not be, de be defeated until we manage to prevent all new infection. In spite of all and the far-reaching successes, successes achieved thanks to the international response and all the efforts in the region, we cannot claim that Ebola control efforts have been successfully completed. Every single new infection in West Africa is alarming. It is for this very reason that we must continue to push the fight against Ebola on the political and international agendas. 
The G7's commitment to the fight against Ebola was a strong signal against the waning interest in Ebola. The lessons learned from West, African, West Africa reaffirm one insight. Efficient and robust health systems are the key prerequisite for the rapid detection and response to health crises. The international community and the G7 can provide valuable input and assistance in building res resilient national health systems. By 2019, therefore, as announced by Chancellor Merkel in New York 10 days ago, Germany will be making an additional 600 million euro available for strengthening health systems in developing countries. However, alongside this, out, uh, this support, it is the countries themselves that must take the decisive moves to implement the right of, to health and the establishment of a strong national health system. National governments have to assume a strong political leadership role and the coordination of the assisting partners has to be improved. Civil society, including the local population and the private sector, must also be involved to make progress. <clears throat> Another key lesson from Ebola is the following. Affected countries have to provide full transparency on their domestic public health situation as early as possible. This is absolutely necessary because only this sharing of transparency allows the international partners to provide a quick and well-informed response to a global health crisis such as Ebola. The international health regulation are the international regulation framework for addressing cross-border health threats. It is clear the implementation and application of the IHR must be improved. The poor implementation of the IHR was a factor that allowed the Ebola outbreak to escalate to its scale. Therefore, national capacities for implementing the IHR must be urgently established and expanded. Here, WHO must play the critical role as a coordinator. The G7 are sending the strong message that countries must be supported in implementing the IHR. 60 countries will be receiving assistance from the G7. With this commitment, we are taking on a profound responsibility and leadership role for global health. I am convinced that regularly global simulation and drills will be necessary in the future to prepare us to contingency such as a major epidemic. They will need to focus specially on the coordination among the relevant international actors. After all, every fire brigade has regularly firefighting drills to be effectively prepared when the fire breaks out. However, to stay in that metaphor, we also have to ensure that this fire brigade is properly equipped to do its job. During the Ebola crisis, many expected WHO to take over this job of a fire brigade to put out the fire of Ebola. It is clear WHO has a central role to play in the fight against cross-border health threats. Consequently, WHO must be properly resourced and fundamentally reformed if we want to reestablish its role as a guardian of global public health. We must strengthen WHO's emergency response capacity in particular. Therefore, my G7 counterparts and I discussed with WHO's Director General how we can help WHO to fulfill its operative leadership role in responding to health emergencies. After all, the reforms needed to boost WHO's efficiency are not likely to happen by themselves. They can only materialize with our collective political will. Considering the multitude of major global health institutions, I am convinced that we need a strong coordinator in the area of global health. WHO, with its global membership, is the only international institution with universal political legitimacy in public health. Accordingly, Germany's membership in WHO has been and continues to be the central and universal frame of reverence that defines our contribution to global health. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said earlier, 
When it comes to global health, Germany sees itself as a major and reliable partner in addressing global challenges and is taking over responsibility. The current refugee crisis in which, in almost, in which almost 60 million persons have been displaced internationally is a challenge of global dimensions. In the light of the dramatic humanitarian emergency caused by the refugee situation in our, also in our region, Germany has sent out a clear message. We are ready to take our responsibility for people in need. The huge response by civil society and individuals throughout Germany on behalf of the arriving refugees is impressive and it's being noticed worldwide. However, one thing is clear. This is a challenge that cannot be managed by a limited number of countries alone. This is a challenge that every region and every country must help to address. This is why the refugee crisis is also high on the global health agenda. We, the international community, have to address the root causes of current refugee crisis. It should not be forgotten that the roots of this crisis are the major conflicts and civil wars in the home countries. The countries most affected by the refugee crisis need our help, the direct neighbors of the refugee home countries. Therefore, the there, the situation in many refugee camps is dramatic and far beyond what the international community could consider acceptable. The G7 Alma Declaration clarifies the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health as one of the fundamental rights of every human being. For us from the health sector, the focus is on securing the refugees' access to health care. It is easy to see why the acceptance and integration of refugees cannot be just about providing accommodation. Instead, we also has to ensure that they have access to medical attention and hygienic conditions. Here, it's essential to ensure that health care is available on the spot in the initial reception centers. This is vital so that communicable diseases can be detected early and treated efficiently. Moreover, moreover, necessary immunization must be carried out. It makes sense to draw on resources available from the refugees themselves. Therefore, we are exploring ways and means how refugee health workers can join German doctors in providing care in the reception centers. Their language skills, for example, can be an invaluable asset. The people who came to us have often experienced extreme physical and psychological violence in their countries of origin. Many of them have been traumatized. It is important that these refugees receive proper care. Therefore, doctors, psychotherapists, and relevant facilities will be empowered to deliver ongoing care to traumatized refugees. Ladies and gentlemen, not only the fact that health is a major priority of Germany's G7 presidency, but also the way in which Germany is actively helping refugees in the current crisis shows that Germany is facing the emergent global challenges head on. And we are shouldering responsibility globally in concert with our partners. I wish the World Health Summit all participants success, fruitful discussions, and good personal relationship. Again, welcome to Berlin.